you know, you, you describe yourself as a pagan and you practice a f- forms of witchcraft as yeah. it's called. Right. And it's, it's, it's interesting. Cause just reading again, reading and, and just hearing you talk about just connecting to these things that are right there in front of us, very simple things, but that is, there's something about that that is that speaks to magic and how maybe because like, I, I think you know growing up in this culture I'm living in the, in the United States of course I'm sure it's very I don't know if it's as similar as it is here in the UK but this sort of idea that magic is this ethereal this sort of thing that's hard to really like understand it's like you have to be born with some special kind of magic <laughs> powers to be able to use it or understand it you know or it's just viewed as just pure superstition. Yeah. But to me, it seems, again, back to this word basic, which is that it's actually just as basic as learning how to like cook and forage and like know the plants and and the life around you and having a you know some sort of communication with that. Is that accurate to you? Is that, does that no, seem at least, yes, at least the beginnings of that? It absolutely is. Because even, you know, when I talk to people who aren't necessarily into witchcraft or and you're talking about what you do. So, for example, I work in a school. It's a very small school. It's a charity school. And I'm very open about what I do. Um, but my colleagues find it fascinating. And none of those, w- none of them would kind of describe themselves as being anything like pagan or witchy or anything like that. But they're all so interested. And when I really break it down and tell them what it is, they're like, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I feel that way as well, you know. And so it's just, I suppose, getting people to see the world in a different way and again it goes back to capitalism because we're all so busy you know most people work long hours in jobs that they don't particularly enjoy or want to work if they were given the choice Um, and so their free time becomes precious but it also becomes their chance to just switch off and so a lot of people you know they work long hours in hard jobs and they're physically and mentally and emotionally tired and drained when they come home And so they just want to sit down in front of the TV and, I don't know, watch some mindless shit and, (laughs) you know, and so it becomes one of those things where you get into the habit of doing that. And so I feel like taking things slowly, really just getting people to connect with where they live, because we have to be sensitive to the fact that people are tired, they are emotionally drained, they're, you know, if you're struggling to live and survive and all of that kind of stuff. Well, it, it takes a toll. And so to, if I was to say, you know, you need to go here and do this and do that, they're like, oh, no, I'm not interested. Yeah. I just want to sit down and not think. So right. it's just about getting people to really see where they live, I suppose, with new eyes, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's crucial. And I do want to ask, I mean, this is um, jumping off into the magic thing a bit. Um I am curious. I don't know much about Obia. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Like not many people do. So I say it's Jamaican witchcraft, but it has its roots in in Africa, in um, in West Africa, and obviously the slave trade and how you know all of that kind of stuff. Um, sure. And so my my family come from Jamaica. My dad was born in Jamaica, and my grandparents came over from Jamaica. Um, to the UK in I think it was the 50s um, and my dad was so what used to happen was the the parents well the man the husband would come over first then my gran came over and then they sent for my dad like a, a year later so they they'd come over and get established and then send for their children so a beer is I call it Jamaican witchcraft and it often gets conflated with voodoo but it, it actually isn't um, mm. and so it's it's I call it I call it Jamaican witchcraft because essentially it is a system of of magic, you know, and I often talk about Nanny of the Maroons. Um, she's a Jamaican national hero, but she was also an Abia woman and she was a slave who was taken from Ghana and she she was basically responsible for the Maroons um, re- receiving freedom. You know, they fought the British and won, won them. Um, which is pretty incredible at the time, if you think about, you know, they were slaves, so they didn't really have anything. They used the knowledge of the land and all of, and their cunning, I suppose, for want of a better word, to really defeat them. Um, and so it, it has its roots in that. But as a result, it became, Obia became illegal to practice in Jamaica, and it's still illegal now. 
Um, mm. So yeah, it's it's pretty similar to. I would I would say it's pretty similar to folk. It's a it's a folk magic um, tradition as opposed to I don't know a, a, a systemized practice. Um, mm-hmm. It gets equated a lot with voodoo, but it, voodoo is a, a religion, and it, you know it has its ways and, and set rituals and the way you do things. But obia is very different. I often say if you had ten obia practitioners in the same room, which you would probably struggle to do anyway, each one of them would look very different from the next. Um, but yeah, yeah. So that was because I am mixed race so my mum is white English my dad's Jamaican and when I first so I've been, I've been practicing witchcraft like traditional British witchcraft well I don't know I hate labels because as soon as you kind of start diving into it you think no that's not quite right um, but folk magic slash traditional British witchcraft I had had an established practice and it was actually when my dad came round one day and it was looking at my bookshelf and it was like, oh, witchcraft this and witchcraft that. And um, I think I was using, there's a book, I think it's called The Little Book of English Magic or something. And I was using it as a research um, tool just to like take notes and stuff. And my dad was like, what about a beer? <laughs> I was like, oh, what is that? And then I was lucky enough to find a family friend um, who practiced because most people who practice it, are very quiet about that practice um you know it's not really some which is why you don't really hear a lot about it as well as it being illegal in a lot of the caribbean islands actually and so yeah that is Mm. in a nutshell what it is so i was lucky enough to find someone who taught me sure well i guess a couple questions come up but the first is why and i know it sounds very naive but (laughs) why was it made illegal and why is it still illegal to this day, do well, you think? to me, it all stems back to capitalism. So if we look at the slave trade in Jamaica at the time, so um, I don't know how much people know about the history of Jamaica, and I'm a bit of a nerd. When I, when I get interested in something, I have to like find out everything about it. Um, right. And so when Jamaica was discovered, um, it was <laughs> done so by the Spanish. Yeah. yeah, it was it was discovered by the Spanish, and I think it was called um, Santiago at the time the country was. And mm. then when Britain um, took control of it, it became known as Jamaica. Um, and so the slaves from Africa. So what happened in the slave trade is that lots of tribes and lots of different peoples were were brought to the Caribbean. And they were kind of mixed up because they didn't want the slaves of the same tribe or the same families in the same plantation because that's just a recipe for trouble, of course, you know. Mm. Um, I think because part of the trouble is when we look at Africa, we look at it as Africa and we don't recognise that Africa is a continent and that there are lots of different countries that make up Africa. And within a, a particular country, there are lots of different tribes as well. And so although languages might be similar, there's lots of difference as well. Um, which is how we come to do Jamaican Patwa as well. Um, And so uh, Obia practitioners were often seen as the trouble causers in the plantations. So they were the ones um, encouraging and really organising the rebellions and the uprisings and and all of that kind of stuff on the plantations. And I think there's a couple of well-documented ones. Nanny of the Maroons like speaks to me, I don't know, She's she's just awesome. But there's there's loads. It's it's well documented. I think another famous one is Taki's Rebellion. Um and so they were seen as like the trouble causes. Because actually the Obia men and women were they were seen as authority figures for the slaves, you know, they were people who had power and their words had power. And so it was identified Obia was identified as being one of the major causes of rebellions and uprisings and so you know we can't have that affecting profits Mm -hmm. can we so you know it's pretty much outlawed and it was outlawed using the same anti-witchcraft laws of like the 17th or 18th century in the UK so there's always been that kind of um link I suppose so yeah that's sorry (laughs) that was why no 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 it's really (laughs) fascinating it's really fascinating because I I guess I'm curious about this, which is 
magic as being a form of, of, of effective resistance to like colonialism or slavery or capitalism. Yeah. And it, it, it gives it, it's interesting because it's like, uh, I would say the dominant culture or like that exists within a white supremacist construct, like what I live in and I imagine what you live in yeah. as well, which is that let's just sort of push away this superstitious nonsense that these people believe and yet at the same time, they're fucking terrified of it and they don't yeah. ever want to practice it. Because there's, there's like this weird acknowledgement of its power. I know. And weirdly, you know? that still goes on today, you know. So yeah. <laughs> um, people are like, well, do you really like, what do you do when they ask me about what I do in like my general practice? And I always feel weird talking to people who have no idea what magic is because it kind of does sound a bit crazy when you just talking about it you know um and i'm very aware of that <laughs> it's just yeah <laughs> slightly odd um but you know and they go oh you, surely you don't believe in in that kind of stuff and whenever anybody says that my stock response is well give me some of your hair then and they're like oh no 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 <laughs> so <laughs> you know it's that kind of thing where there's that disbelief but then there's also they don't want to risk it <laughs> 